God. It's always a comfort when, when sisters come together, when we come together to listen to your word. Um, Father, I just pray that you will open our heart as we listen to the message and we will listen and put it in, into practice what we learned tonight. I pray for the speaker. Please give her the, the words and help us to encourage her during the in Jesus name I pray all this. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Fabi. Oh, let me take this time to welcome everybody Amen. who have joined us. Uh, I'm so excited just to see so many people connecting uh, for our tonight's midweek service. Uh, we are blessed tonight. We've got a treat all the way from Swane <laughs> Church of Christ. <laughs> Maybe some of you know her. Some will have to do deep fellowship after this lesson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our honorable speaker <laughs> is our dear sister patient student. She was baptized in 2002 at Cape Town. Then she moved to Pretoria in 2007 and got married to our brother Prince Dube in 2009 they were blessed with two beautiful daughters a 10 year old and seven year old girl so now she's uh, working uh, in human resource department wow. in an insurance company so sisters, let's all unmute and welcome our sister patients to be from Tswane Church of Christ. Yay! Welcome, Ooh, welcome. 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 Welcome, welcome patients. Welcome, patients. <laughs> Thank you very much. I feel very um, welcome. <laughs> after, after that, I'll, I'll just mute everyone so that uh, it's only P's mic that is on so that we don't get distraction on the way. Amen. Thank you. Let me check our, yeah, if all mute, I will just mute all there after, um, yeah, you over to you, P. <laughs> Thank you very much for that warm welcome, my sisters. I really appreciate it. I already feel like I'm a part of the group. Thank you. So um, let's, let's, let me pray one more time and then we can start. Uh, my Father, my God, uh, Lord of Lords, um, King of Kings, what an honor it is to share some thoughts and insights from your word. Today, I humbly pray, God, that you will fill me with wisdom that only comes uh, from knowing you and um, from connecting with you. Father God, I am no, I'm not better than anyone on this platform and yet you've chosen me today. And I pray, Father, that you will open our hearts, um, that everything we do, God, and everything we learn, that um, everyone on the call will be inspired, encouraged, challenged, and that um, everything we, we learn today, Father, will, will get us to connect with you at a deeper level than we've ever done before. Help us to find healing and hope, God. Help us to recommit ourselves to you, Father, as we, as we look for our identity in you, Father. Help us to understand that only you can provide us with that security, my God. I thank you so much. Open the, the eyes of our hearts, Father. Remove the scales from our eyes and help us, Father, to learn. I thank you. I praise you. It's in Jesus' name I ask all this. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today Amen. we are going to look at a portion um, of the book of Ezekiel. 
So um, I read somewhere that the book of Ezekiel, it, it, it means God strengthens. So how encouraging is that? That there's a book that is specifically written to strengthen us, to encourage us. So as we find our security in God, I, I want us all to take our notebooks and be ready to do some introspection and be ready to write down some notes. And maybe for the young ones, you know, you've got your gadgets. But for all of us, then I'm going to encourage us to open our Bibles to Ezekiel 23. Today, we are going to look at uh, that portion of the book of Ezekiel. So as a start, um, Ezekiel has five themes. Now, the first theme is about the character of God. And Ezekiel as a priest was concerned about the holiness of God. The second one is about the sinfulness of Israel. And the third aspect that we see in the book of Ezekiel is judgment. And fourthly, we read about individual responsibility and ultimately we learn about a promise of a future restoration. So for tonight though, we will work on Ezekiel 23 and um, I'm going to encourage you to take some time to read the whole book of Ezekiel, but today we'll focus on chapter 23. So we'll pick up from there. And in this story or in this Bible, we see uh, a representation and an allegory of two sisters. So we see them representing Samaria, which is the Northern Kingdom of Israel and Jerusalem, which is the Southern Kingdom of Judah. Now, I'm going to warn you up front that Ezekiel uses shocking sexual metaphors to describe how the two nations violated the covenant of God. And today, because we have a wide audience, I'm going to allow you to read at a later stage on your own. But to protect the younger generation, I think I might have heard that there's a teen or I saw a teen. Um, I am going to be cautious with my language so that um, we get the gist of what the Bible is teaching us, but without being just too explicit. But where I'm reading in the Bible, I will read as the Bible uh, uh, tells it, right? So we will also see how the marital imagery is used for the relationship between God and Israel. And so I'm going to invite you to be still I will ask some questions that I've had to ask myself and, um, and I've had to take some time to ponder over this lesson and, and I'm encouraging all of us to learn together as we go into the, into the scriptures. I'm going to start off by reading verses 1 to verse 4 and uh, Ezekiel 23 is about two adulterous sisters. All right, it says, the word of the Lord came to me son of men, there were two women, daughters of the same mother. They became prostitutes in Egypt, engaging in prostitution from their youth. In that land, their breasts were fondled and their virgin bosoms caressed. The older was named Ohola and her sister was Oholiba. They were mine and gave birth to sons and daughters. Ohola is Samaria and Oholiba is Jerusalem. I'm just going to pause right there as we start. It says the sisters allowed men to fondle them. So these are descendants of one nation. And if you just think about the word allowed, it is about a person making a choice and they allowed impurity in their lives. Um, when, when you allow something, you are saying it's permissible. You are saying it's acceptable. And so the first question, we open up with a question. What impurity are you allowing in your life? The Bible says, I married them and they bore me sons. So marriage is a covenant between God and marriage is the most precious of intimate relationships and adultery symbolizes spiritual unfaithfulness. When a marriage covenant is broken through infidelity or another lover, the hurt and the damage is irreparable. It's not impossible, but the hurt is deep. So unfaithfulness 
is disloyalty. And it doesn't take place in an instant. It's over time. Over time, you straddle the boundaries until you don't feel any remorse or a nudging in your conscience. So my question for you as we get practical is, what is it that is in your life that has caused you to drift away from God? What is it that has impacted your spirituality? So now, if we are being practical, we need to think about what James 5, verse 16 says. It says, let's confess our sins to one another. Why? Because others can pray for us. And so when we stop to introspect and think, we should be asking ourselves, what stops us from confessing? I know for me, um, sometimes it's because I fear being judged and then I withdraw, or I fear what people will think, and then I withdraw. But it's important to resist the temptation to pull away. Because if you think about it, think about your current spiritual journey. Is there spiritual infidelity? And maybe today is your first day, and you are thinking, yo, I went to this church, they already started speaking about infidelity and uh, breasts and all of these things, Gandhi, I mean, okay, Gandhi is, okay, uh, what's happening? What's going on? So I invite you to get to know God. The person that asked you to join, I invite you to speak to them so you can learn and understand um, what God's standard is and his precepts and his love so that you can find your security in him. How can we be secure in God if we are separated from God? We can't. There's still going to be that divide. So today is going to be a frank conversation because we can't be secure in God if we are unfaithful to him. So we see that Israel turned her back on God and Israel forgot God's love. And so I'm going to ask all of you sisters on the call, have you forgotten your first love? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but let's read and learn and hear what we can, we can, we can do about where we find ourselves. Okay, I'm going to read from verse 5 to verse 10. It says, Ohola engaged in prostitution while she was still mine. She lasted after her lovers, the Assyrians, warriors clothed in blue, governors and commanders, all of them handsome young men. Uh, uh, they mounted horsemen. She gave herself as a prostitute to the elite of the Assyrians and defiled herself with all the idols and everyone she lasted after. She did not give up prostitution she began in Egypt when during her youth, men slept with her, caressed her virgin bosom and poured out their lust upon her. Therefore, I handed her over to her lovers, the Assyrians, for whom she lusted. They stripped her naked, took away her sons and daughters and killed her with a sword. She became a byword among the women, punished and was inflict punishment was inflicted on her. So we see here that Ohola was unrestrained. She was out of order. She went after lo lovers that she, she desired, and God left her, stripped her away, took her children as slaves, then killed her. Her reputation was known to men. The sin here is clear, and it's inevitable that God separated himself from them. We know this. We know that sin separates us from God. There was wickedness and idolatry in the land. Doesn't the Bible say in Galatians, you, my sisters, you've been called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge in the sinful nature. So what are you doing with your freedom? Are you free in Christ and yet you feel enslaved due to perhaps the unrepentant sin that's in your life? So what's your reputation and what will you be known for when you are gone? I was thinking the other day, I actually had an incident with an Uber and, uh, okay, it's a long story. And, and maybe if I, we, you can phone me and I'll tell you all about it. But I remember thinking, so I, I, almost, I almost got into a car that was not the Uber and the person was not Vuyo who was supposed to be the Uber driver. It was raining, it was scary. I, I just 
God protected me. But what would have happened if I was gone, if they took me and maybe they killed me? What would I have been known for? So what, what, will, what will you know me for? In the workplace, what are you known for? If you leave or if you die today or tomorrow, because today you are present. If you die tomorrow, what will you be known for? For that person that maybe when the lady comes to clean you, you are just, you know, holding your nose and, you know, you're like, hey, please also there is a mug and, you know, you don't treat people with respect or with love or with grace or with kindness or whatever it may be. You look at yourself up here and everyone else is down here. What will be your reputation? So I'm going to ask you to take some time and take stock. Send someone an SMS and say to them, you know what, I really want to spend some time to confess. Because reality is that if we don't confess, we are unlikely to repent and we will perish. So who are you going to send an SMS to right now? We can stop, we can pause, we can give you a few minutes and you can do that. My invitation to all of us is that we must start the process and choose to be different from Israel, that we're so attached to idolatry and to fame. So, and maybe while we go on to verses 11 and verse 19, send someone a text and say, uh, hello, sis Nobuntu, please, I want to confess straight after the meeting. It's okay, you don't have to say anything now on the SMS, just send an SMS to say, I would like to spend some time, even if it's just 10 minutes. So let's read from verses 11 to 19. It says, her sister, Oholiba saw this, and yet in her last and prostitution, she was more depraved than her sister. She too lusted after the Assyrian, the governors, the commanders, the warriors in full dress, mounted horsemen, and all handsome young men. I saw that she too defiled herself and both of them went the same way. She carried her prostitution till further. She saw men portrayed on a wall, figures of Chaldeans portrayed in red with belts around their waist and flowing turbans on their head. All of them looked like Babylonian chariot officers, natives of Chaldea. And of course, these were people that were good looking and were dressed well. It goes on to say, as soon as she saw them, she lusted after them. And she sent messengers to them in Chaldea. Then the Babylonians came to her, to the bed of love, and in their lust, they defiled her. After she'd been defiled by them, she turned away from them in disgust. When she carried on her prostitution openly and exposed her nakedness, I turned away from her in disgust. Just as I had turned away from his sister. Yet she became more and more promiscuous as she recalled the days of her youth when she was a prostitute in Egypt. Yes, the language is intense and there'll be more. But what do we see here? The lesson is that Oholiba saw this and she didn't learn. She was worse than Ohola. She was more depraved. She abandoned herself to lust and prostitution. And God was disgusted, just as he was with Oholiba, because she remembered her youth. You see now, in Samaria, the reputation was known to everyone. And, and Jerusalem continued in their ways, and the spiritual adultery deepened. So I would like for you to pause and think, what consequences of sin do you see around you, but you still don't change or you're not learning? I would like for people, well, I think I'm older. Uh, maybe what Sister Nobuntu didn't say is my age. So I'm 43, 43 or 44. Okay, okay, I can't calculate, but over 40. So what's the point? The point is, um, what am I... Uh, what am I seeing and I'm not learning from, pe from other people's mistakes, right? Have you given up on sin because you can't change and you just abandon yourself to it and you think, 
You know what? I'm just, you know, I lie. I'm just going to lie again. Oh, I, this pride, I can never get get through, get through, over it. I just, I'm, I'm just prideful. Just accept me. Or maybe it's something else. And, and if we're getting practical to the older sisters, all of us are older than someone. So in essence, I'm talking to everyone. Are you a Titus II sister? Are you being a good example? Are you teaching a younger sister in the faith something good? And how do you respond when someone comes to you and says something to you, or do you continue to enable that sinful behavior? So today I'm going to invite you to do a lot of things. And your next challenge is an invitation to be someone's prayer partner, to restore them when they need restoration, to listen, to help, to coach. We are older in the faith than someone in the church. So nothing stops us from being a mentor. Nothing stops us from teaching. You know, when someone comes to you and says, hey, you know what I did? And then when I, and then when I means you, and then you open your eyes wide and you think, what? You know, it just becomes a big hubaloo and the person will not continue to tell you stuff because you've already expressed shock because it was jaw dropping stuff and you just think, Hi, what else can I tell patients if she's already reacting like this? I am not going to continue. I'll just share a little bit and test to see if she will be willing to listen. And so my encouragement is maybe, maybe you haven't been confessing and now it has piled up. And so now you're ready to go to um, whoever you go, you've SMSed. And now you said, can we please do 10 minutes and it's taking 20 or 30. So my invitation to the other person is open yourself up to listen without judgment, to hear what the other person's pain is. Because when we sin, there is something that's triggered within us. And maybe there's a fear or there's a desire or there's a longing. And then we sin. So understand why. Um, deep calls to deep. You can't. You can't just, okay, yeah, no, the Bible says repent, repent, sister, repent. Let's understand why. Let's walk with each other. So in ensuring that people get their security from God, let's all walk with each other as long as it's called today. When you see something, when you notice something, anything that doesn't sit well with you, what are you going to do about it? And I think that's the question. That's what we need to be thinking about. If I am my sister's keeper, how do I bring people along so that people feel comfortable in coming to me and saying, you know what, I lusted after this man in my office and I found that, you know, he was looking good and therefore um, it was easy to speak to, uh, it was easier to speak to him than I, I find speaking to my prince and, and maybe there's tension in the house, I find it easier. And, and, you know, I can see that I'm starting to straddle that line. And because it starts in the heart, I'm seeing that, you know, I'm feeling more comfortable with this man rather than being comfortable with my husband. And so if we just take a step back and look at the past two chapters, or the, the verses I've read, we are halfway in the chapter. The verses 1 to 10 speak about unfaithfulness and the punishment of Ohola, that's the nation of Samaria. Then verses 11 to 21 speak of Oholiba, which is Jerusalem's unfaithfulness, which was really, really much worse. So let's go on and read and see what else goes on in this, in this chapter. Okay. From this 20 to verse 31, I'm going to read. Um, there she lasted after lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, whose emission was like that of horses. So you longed for the lewdness of your youth when in Egypt your bosom was caressed and young breasts fondled. Therefore, O Holiba, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will stir up your lovers against you. Those you turned away from in disgust, I will bring them against you from every side. The Babylonians, the Chaldeans, the men of Pedok and Shoah and Koa and all the Assyrians with them. Hence, young, young men, all of them governors, commanders, chariot officers, and men of high rank 
all mounted on horses. They will come against you with weapons, chariots and wagons with a throng of people. They will take up positions against you on every side with large and small sheets with helmets. I will turn you over to them for punishment and they will punish you according to their standards. I will direct my jealous anger against you and they will deal with you in fury. They will cut off your noses and your ears and those of you who are left will fall by the sword. They will take away your sons and daughters and those of you who are left will be consumed by fire. They will also strip you of your clothes and take your fine jewelry. So I will put a stop to the lewdness and prostitution you began in Egypt. You will not look on these things with longing and remember Egypt anymore. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm about to hand you over to those you hate, they, uh, to those you turned away from in disgust. They will deal with you in hatred and take away everything you've worked for. They will leave you naked and bare and the shame of your prostitution will be exposed. Your lewdness and promiscuity you have brought, have brought upon you because you lusted after the nations and defiled yourself with their idols. You have gone the way of your sister, so I will put a cup into your hand. Right. The last and the sin continued and God's judgment was pronounced on him. And I think maybe the insight here is just going back to see the insight that, you know, an adulterous death sentence was fitting for an adulterer. So you expose in public what had taken place in private. God would strip her naked as a symbol of divorce and as an act of divorce. When we read in Ezekiel 16, in Hosea, in Leviticus, in Deuteronomy, we see how people would stone prostitutes to death. And this act would cover her with blood and she would leave the earth just as she came into it. Now, reading all of this, I ask myself, of course, we are talking about the two nations here that were involved in sin and idolatry and bringing it back home. I don't want to be stripped by God. And I think the question to all of us is, is there a longing to go back to your sinful life? And I know here they make reference to prostitution and it may not even be that. It's just um, a, a, a parallel that they are making. So, or maybe you are not longing to go back to your sinful life. You've just gone back and it's comfortable and it's familiar. And maybe you are flirting with men or lusting after men or maybe lusting after women. Because, you know, we were talking about how unfaithfulness starts in the heart. What boundaries have you put in place for yourself? And, and you know, if you are thinking about uh, God sees, God sees what's happening. But it will take us putting up our hands and saying, you know what, God, I'm sorry. And confessing to someone that you know what, um, this is what has happened. I would like to change. Can you help me? So you are free to choose to respond the way you want. Remember, we're talking about Galatians 5.13, where we have the freedom to do what we want, but um, our freedom shouldn't lead us to indulging in our sinful nature. But I guess it's also about remembering that everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. So my invitation to you is if you find yourself in a place where you are familiar with sin, comfortable with sin, then you need to start that journey of healing, of restoration. What shall we do? What shall we say? If the Holy Spirit is nudging you right now, then to that sister that you said, I want to confess afterwards, perhaps you need to be a little bit more open and say, this is how I've been unfaithful to God. And what I learned from Ohola and Oholiba is one, two, three, or four, five, six. And so whatever God is saying to you tonight, take time, take stock and think, and maybe it's not for you to send an SMS tonight. Maybe you want to think about it. Maybe you want to spend time praying and asking for God to reveal what it is that you can't see anymore because you're so familiar 
with the sin, you don't see it anymore. And you ask for God, okay, God, please open my eyes. Help me to see what I need to see. Help me to learn what I should be learning. Help me to relearn what I need to relearn and be challenged and be moved by the Bible. When we read verses 32 to 37, we see that God said, this is what the sovereign Lord said, you will drink your sister's cup, a large cup and deep. It will bring scorn and dare decision for it holds so much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of ruin and desolation, the cup of your sister Samaria. You will drink it and drain it dry. You will dash it into pieces and tear your breasts. I have spoken, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Since you've forgotten me and thrust me behind your back, you must bear the consequences of your lewdness and prostitution. The Lord said to me, son of man, will you judge Ohola and Oholiba, then confront them with their detestable practices? For they've committed adultery and blood is on their hands. They committed adultery with their idols. They even sacrificed their children whom they bore to me as food for them. How do you sacrifice your child? But that's a story for another day. What we are learning here is that Oholiba copied the life of her sister Ohola. And God said he would let Oholiba drink the same cup that his sister did. God would bring an army to her and end her lewdness. His judgment would be a warning to others not to follow their wicked example. Now, we can, we can decide today that we don't want to fall into the hands of the living God and we can make a decision to change. And having made that decision, I know it's going to be difficult because we don't, I don't know how far you've gone and maybe, maybe there's nothing to confess, amen, and that's good, but maybe there is and maybe it's a small thing, but it's this thing that you can't change and you keep on working on and you work on and, you, and there's still no change. Maybe it needs to be a different way of dealing with it. Maybe it's prayer and fasting. Maybe it's unpacking to see where is, where is the trigger? Why are you keeping on going there where you are not supposed to be going there? If, if we just look at um, the, the, the different nations, yes, of course, there was idolatry and maybe your idol is binging on Netflix every day, all the day, all the time. And maybe your idol is your cell phone. You're on your cell phone. You wake up before you even say, Father God, thank you that you kept me awake. I mean, kept me alive to see another day. You are on your phone checking to see, okay, so I don't know what's going on on Facebook and, you know, who does patients like and, you know, I don't know what's going on. But my encouragement is let's learn from these two nations so that our lives can be different so that we can change. Now, um, as we read the rest of the chapter in, in, in closing, uh, let's read to the end and see. Uh, we're reading from verses uh, 38 to the end. Uh, they've also done this to me. At the same time, they defiled my sanctuary and desecrated my Sabbath. On the very day they sacrificed their children to their idols, they entered my sanctuary and desecrated it. That is what they did in my house. And maybe I'll just pause there because then uh, there would have been a sanctuary where the, all this, uh, the defilement took place. But if you're thinking about it now, your body is the temple of the living God. So that's the sanctuary that you would be defiling if you continue with unrepentant sin. In verse 40, it says, they even sent messengers for men who came from far away, and when they arrived, you bathed yourself for them, painted your eyes and put on your jewelry. You sat on an elegant couch with a table spread before it uh, in which, on which you had placed the incense oil that belonged to me. The noise of a carefree crowd was around her. Sabians were brought from the desert along with men from the rebel and they put bracelets on the arms of the woman and her sister and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said about the one worn out by adultery. Now, 
Let them use her as a prostitute, for that is all she is. And they slept with her as men sleep with a prostitute, so they slept with those lewd women, Ohola and Oholiba. But righteous men will send us them to the punishment of women who commit adultery and shed blood, because they are adulterous and blood is on their hands. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Bring a mob against them and give them over to terror and plunder. The mob will stone them and cut them down with their sword. They will kill their sons and daughters and burn down their houses. So I will put an end to the lewdness in the land that all women may take warning and not imitate you. You will suffer the penalty of your lewdness and bear the consequences of your sin of idolatry. Then you will know that I'm the sovereign Lord. Now, I mean, looking at chapter 23, it's a, it's a very intense chapter. And, and I understand that we cannot do justice to it in 30 or, or 40 minutes. And maybe I rushed through it and maybe you are still reeling from the first question I asked. And so I'm going to ask you to take some time to go back and reflect on it. Now, we need to remember that our bodies are the temple of the living God. And as we carry ourselves, we cannot go on sinning. There are consequences for not repenting. And we can't be secure in God if we are far from him. And when verse 48 speaks of how um, all women may take warning and not imitate the two sisters, this is feedback to all nations, whether it's Samaria or Jerusalem throughout Israel. It is about all of us learning um, about what happened to these two nations so that we can take heed and repent. This is a challenging lesson, but it doesn't end here. And that's why at the beginning I shared the five, the five themes in the book of Ezekiel, even though today I only focused only on one. Ezekiel 33 and 34 and, 30 and 37 are messages of hope messages of restoration, messages of a covenant of God, of peace. And so um, what is the promise? The Bible says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. And what promise do we talk about? It is the promise that it is, that is in 2 Peter um, 3 verse 9. It says, the Lord is not slow to keeping his promise, as some people may think. No, he's being, he's being patient for your sake, for my sake. So this, this message is for me just as much as it is for you. I'm not any better. It says in verse uh, three, uh, chapter 3, verse 9 of Second Peter, um, it says, no, he's being patient for your sake, for all our sake. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. He wants everyone to repent. And because we have this hope, we have this promise, we know that it is not all doom and gloom. We see where we are, we do our own introspection, we understand the Bible, the standard, so we see how far we've, we've separated from God, then we come back, because God does not want us to perish. God wants all of us to repent. And so we have an opportunity to listen, to hear, to relearn some things that we had forgotten so we can repent. So this is the essence of today's lesson. I am going to thank you for your attention. I don't even think we are allowed for time for questions and answers. I don't know if I have the courage to ask for questions and answers uh, or for questions because I don't know if I have all the answers. But um, maybe let me pray before I hand over to Sis Nobuntu. Father God, today we pray for a faith that is like Abraham's, who dared to believe beyond what is visible and, and realistic. Father, I pray that you will give me that faith. Give all of us that faith, everyone that is on the call today. Teach us, Father, to remember that you are still sovereign. You are in charge. You are the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And you are the one that we must all, um, that we must connect to. I pray, Father, I know that nothing is too hard for you. I pray that you will rescue us and search our hearts, Father, and replace what the idols that are in our hearts with a longing um, and a desire 
to be with you and, and to connect and to be one with you. Father God, I pray that you will help us to find our security in you, not in things, not in idols. And Father, there's nothing wrong with all these material things, but when they start to take your place, I pray, Father, that we will not allow that. Dear God, I pray, Father, that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. And I pray that because we are all a new creation, we can't continue to go back to our sin. We can't continue to, to live with masks and, you know, everyone thinks everything is hunky-dory. Meanwhile, we have a double life and, you know, we have a, a life on this side. And then when we are with our friends in church, we're like, oh, yes, oh, holy, oh, holy. And I pray, Father, that... Um, there will be openness. I pray for the courage to have the conversations with the sisters that we have SMS, that Satan will not take away that desire to go and have a conversation, that Satan will not have a foothold, but Father, that we will start the journey of healing and restoration and, and getting close to you. Father God, thank you for your promise. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for your love and your grace. And I pray for everyone that's driving. I remember seeing a sister that's in a car, pray, Father, that you protect her and send your angels to watch over her, Father, as she drives, as she go, goes home. And everyone else, I pray, Father, that you be with the rest of us, um, all of us. And, and I pray, Father, that everything we do, Father, will bring us closer to you. I thank you. I praise you. It's in Jesus' name I ask all this. Amen. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, okay. Did you say something before Precious close with a word of prayer? Come again. Okay. Um, I'm saying, do you want to say something before Precious close with a word of prayer? Mm -hmm. Patients must uh, uh, thank uh, P for the lesson, and before she prays, she must just yeah do a proper closing. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Precious. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, I would firstly like to thank Umam Dube. Um, for taking us back to reflect on our walk with God, where we are and where we should be, um, for inviting us to confessing our sins and for inviting us to praying together as well. Yeah, Sabonga, Mam Dube, for the beautiful message that you, that you shared with us. At this time, um, let us close our eyes and pray. Babono Mosa went on a man shank, Osama Cosi, that was Ulum Shaba. I get Kofan and our Sosa baby conjanga away. Baba Wena, Ungusoni in Nani Ungusom Kulu. You are the beginning and the end. You are the all knowing God, the omniscient God, Baba. There is no God like you. Never has there been, nor will there ever be any other God like you. Baba Sia Bonga, Spongilanga, Lanam Shanje, Sibongo Pila, Spongo Vuga, Sponge our families, dear God, Sponge for protecting us throughout the day, for carrying us, dear Lord Almighty. And I thank you, Father God, that you have allowed us to be able to come together in your name, Father God. We thank you for using Omam Dube in this uh, powerful way, in sharing the message about reflecting on where we are at and where we ought to be, Holy God. Where we have sinned in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our speech, in our actions, please forgive us, Holy God. Purify our hearts and purify our minds. And Lord Almighty, help us to be called into living and leading a life that honors and glorifies you at all times, Holy God. Search our hearts, dear Lord Almighty, and lead us in the way everlasting, dear Lord God. Father God, I thank you for um, this evening. I pray, dear Lord Almighty, that this message is something that we can take to heart, dear God, whether it is sharing with one another and reflecting on it even after um, we close off or uh, sharing it with, with our fellow friends or our fellow um, neighbors or our family members, dear God Almighty, and just to make them aware as well of what God is calling us to, you know, and not just keeping it to ourselves. Dear God Almighty, I pray that we do not shy away 
away from embracing who we are in Christ, embracing, Father God, the new life that you have given us, dear Lord Almighty, in Christ, you know. And I pray that we walk, Father God, with courage and with boldness, dear Lord oh Father, because that's who we are in you, dear Lord God. You know, I thank you, dear Lord Almighty, for all that you continue to do for us. I pray all this in your wonderful son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Kabu and uh, Precious, for mm -hmm. taking charge of tonight's midweek service. Thank you so, so much, Precious, for taking us through and opening our hearts and our minds through uh, such a powerful scripture. And mm -hmm. uh, sisters, I really appreciate your presence as well. May we take uh, the lesson that we have learned today into practice just meet whether in discipling or in just in your own corners there with your coach or mentor to talk through what is it that you you are you have taken from this uh, lesson or and also you must also I think what is important is for us to open up about what's what's bothering us what is it that we feel like we're unfaithful to god there's a lot that yeah we can we, we can get and taking time to pray as we've been uh, also uh, challenged taking time to fast so that we can have these repenting hearts not hurting hearts so yeah thank you thank you so so much Pei, for this <laughs> challenging message we really need it. I need it. I am not sure about others, but I feel like I needed to hear such a message tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, may God bless you all, guys. Thank you so much for connecting. Amen. We'll see you Sunday. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Bye. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, patience. Bye. 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 <laughs>